from our previous um, tutorials. So in the last video we were looking at um, my rendering and going through the different attributes and settings within the my software drop downs. This time what we're gonna look at is my hardware my hardware 2.0. So basically what my hardware 2.0 is it's a GPU based rendering solution. So what that means is anything within the viewport your viewport is this will be rendered so it doesn't matter what you have attached to it it'll be rendered so let's have a little look at these shaders let's just um, have a little look see what options we'll have let's just drop in a totally different shader as well just to, to sort of mix things up a bit so let's create a um, let's add a shaded brightness three tone this is a, a cell shader basically so uh, kind of cool and again we can obviously adjust anything within um, within these sort of parameters here we can add in additional colors we can give this like a thick black edge maybe we can perhaps change this around you can see there we're getting some really really cool stuff already maybe that could be um, being black perhaps be white no, that's kind of, yeah, let's, let's let's just remove that. have a little play see what we're getting what's kind of cool on these as well is at the minute <clears throat> the interpolation is set none so basically this just means it's quite linear let's just change this to smooth you can see there we're getting like more of a graduated softer fall off again you could set this to interpolation smooth and you can see it's smoothing out this next area and again you can do the same again uh, sorry, smooth. and you can see there how you're getting like a really nice cool looking sort of shade of area Obviously, you could then put that back if you wanted something that's a little harsher. You know. So you can mix and match, and you get some really nice effects with it. Make this a bit darker. So it gives us like more of a contrasted line. Let's just pull these up and around so we get that there. That's kind of neat. Okay, so basically, the way that viewport 2.0 works is it renders anything within um, the viewport. So anything that we add, it will render that. So to get access to those viewport 2.0 settings, you go render it viewport 2.0 hit the little checkbox and these are our options right here um, so transparency algorithm that's just basically any textures that have an alpha channel associated to them we don't have any on this but we'll maybe go over that in a few videos time um, the most relevant things to look for with viewport 2.0 it's actually a really useful rendering tool for um, pre-visualizing animation things like that um, and giving us a, an idea of how things are going to look so we've all done those we've turned on ambient occlusion and then we've got a few little sliders here basically it's just a very quick way of rendering um, output i wouldn't recommend using this as a final default renderer however it does have its uses and um, it can prove to be fairly useful if you're in a bit of a the binds so samples basically the number of samples so the more detail that's been added into the into this um ambient occlusion you can see there you know, just this yeah, it's softer and you can see we're zooming in we're getting some jagged edges on the mesh again we can adjust this turn on area sun on okay, we should see like a bit of a pop to adjust those you shouldn't be getting quite so much shaggies in there. This is a little better, but down here. I think Maya, they, would, they should really up this to sample a bit 16, perhaps. <coughs> um, hardware fog, we could add uh, fog to this. Which you would need to enable in the camera. So if you went into the settings of the camera and enabled it in there, you could do that. If you want it to turn on wireframe as well, so wireframe on shader. Like I say, anything within the viewport would be rendered out. And sometimes these can be really useful for when you're doing turnarounds of your characters. So 
that clients or people can perhaps see how you've constructed the model. Um, could be pretty, pretty, pretty useful. So let's just, um, just for this, the purposes of rendering this out, I'm going to turn everything off. Polygons, I want to get rid of the grid, so let's hide the grid. I want to turn off the hood, hide the hood, and I want to just make this nice and big. Let's just uh, change the background colour as well. Um, so I'm hitting Alt and B, and it's changing the background colour. So maybe something like that. Um, and again, because we've got uh, anti aliasing on, you can see in the wireframe we're getting something relatively decent. And what I'm going to do is perspective. I'm going to select the camera, which is the perspective camera, and hit Command and G. And what I'm going to do is go back to zero on the timeline, and I'll set that to 25 frames. And it doesn't really make a great deal of difference, just for the purposes of this. Um, but these are just basically some of the options that you have available to you. So with our group, which is, let's go Windows Outliner, and we'll touch on this in another video as well, how the outliner works. So effectively what we've got in this group is the camera. So I'll just rename this to camera group. The camera group. And then what we're going to do is we're going to keyframe this, <coughs> the rotation. Key it there. And at frame 160, I'm going to put this to 359. So basically it's going to do a full uh, 360 degree turn. So what we should get is if we click off this and hit play, we should be getting a nice rotation. And what I'll quickly do is just go to Windows, Animation Editor, Graph Editor, and set the key. At the minute there's a curve on this keyframe. I don't actually know why that's set that to... Windows values for, but never mind. Yeah, sure, attributes uh, clear below. Rotate, hit F, there we go, that's better. Um, and just set this to linear. So these are the different interpolations that you have with your keyframes. So you've got auto, spline, uh, flat, and change all these. You can select the individual handles. Let's just select this thing. You can select the individual handles when uh, I decide it wants to. Um, and then we can start rotating these. Just, let's just make sure that these are set to zero. And this is set to three, five, nine. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set this to linear. The reason it's linear, I just want it to be constant. So let's have a look at this. Let's see what we get. And we should just have this nice rotation of this object there. So it's effectively the group that's parented to this uh, this camera parent of the group. Anyway, I'll move this. It's just going to rotate with this. So it's just going to be relative to the group. Because the group is effectively to this is just rotating now. I'm pretty happy with that. That'll do. So how do you render stuff out within Viewport 2.0? Again, you can come into this checkbox. Let's just pull this over here, just for ease. And th this is very much the same as um, my uh, software. The one thing to remember is you're limited to the uh, GPU. In this case, I've got quite an old uh, MacBook, and it will only allow us to render out 1920 by 1080 and I'm pretty certain that that's default with my uh, uh, my hardware two point viewport two point oh render. You can change the settings here which is effectively mirror mirroring these settings here. Um, so it just depends on what preference that you have of, of where you want it to work. Um, and again you could render either an image sequence from here or you could right click within the timeline Play blast, and because a lot of people tend to just use this as a um, for a preview, um, sort of sequence, uh, preview previewing the uh, sort of sequence, we can change this um, format. So every foundation is this basically video, that encoding H two six four, which is QuickTime. We we'll change that to a photo JPEG, change it to image, and then we can choose. If we format as image, we could then choose whatever image that we want to spit out. So we could have obviously JPEG, my if, whatever. 
PSD, whatever. Um, but in this case, we just want to render out a video, AV Foundation, H264, 1920 by 1080, scale of, of 1, which effectively means that you'll that will be the correct size. It will render, you know, you could set it to 0.5, it will just render a half res um, image, which will effectively be half of this resolution. Set this to 1. Don't worry too much about the frame pattern. We want to save it to file, browse. Let's just um, select the desktop. And then this is just test. That'll do. Test. And then hit play blast. And it's basically going to spit out a, a quick real time GPU render. So you might think, yeah, it's a bit crap. It's, it's what use is that? You could use this for a few things actually. You could render out alpha images. Um, and a lot of people tend to use it to render out sort of cell shaded stuff. And in terms of like quick renders, it's not bad. Um, you know, if we were then in quick time set this to view loop and then hit play, it would just constantly loop. So I mean, this might be good for potentially showing clients any of your 3D modeling work where you just want to have your character loop rotating. And this might be one instance where I might think about using um, Viewport 2.0 for preview, um, client approval of animation, perhaps um, modeling, etc. It can be useful, it has its own purpose. So that's just to make you aware of that. So that's my Viewport, viewport 2.0. In the next video, what we'll do is we'll look at um, Arnold within Maya and the differences between Arnold. Basically, Arnold is a computational render engine. It's physically accurate, um, and it's very technical. It's very mathematical based. So we'll look at that in the next video.